So, so let's keep going here. Let's, I like multiplying. Let's go. See, I do that and I record it so that you can show this back to your family and say, this, this is my teacher. <laughs> this is what he does. Now let's look at this. Now we've got to be careful with this. And this kind of leads us into what we're going to be talking about next time uh, with order of operations. What you're supposed to do first is if you have parentheses, you're supposed to combine or do whatever you can inside that first. So when I look at this problem, I need to look first inside here. And what do I see? It's multiplication, so I get what? I get 21. So then my answer here is a negative 3 times 21, and then I finish this. A negative times a positive is what? So it's going to be a negative, and you just have to worry. This is the thing. The big thing to worry about is your sign. Okay? Because I hope that you know how to do 3 times 21. And if you've forgotten how to do all the multiplication stuff, I think there's a reviewed chapter for like multiplication and the long division, this stuff that you're supposed to know. So 3 times 21 is what? So it's 63, so my answer is negative 63, right? Like a boss? All right, well, let's do, let's do another one. If I have negative 9 times negative 1 times negative 4. You've got to go with this piece by piece. So if I look here and I multiply these first two factors together, what do you get? You get a positive 9, right? Yes. Yeah. So this is a positive 9 and then times negative 4. This isn't addition, is it? No. When things are right next to each other, it's understood to be multiplication. So positive 9 times negative 4 is what? It's a negative 36. It's a negative 36. What do you think about that? The biggest thing in all of this is WYS, which means what? Watch your signs. Please don't make me write that on your paper. I'm just asking you to do what's right. And you guys can do what's right. It's, a, it's like I tell my children, it's all a choice. Now I want to talk about some properties that we have with multiplication. So let's talk about the multiplication property. The multiplication property of zero. And all this really says is that if you take any number represented by A, any number times zero should equal what? It's zero, right? Any number times zero is zero. Do you believe me? Yes. Yeah. Then there's this guy. And this is the multiplication property of one. The multiplication property of 1 says this. Any number times 1 equals what? It equals that number. In this case, it's represented by A. So what I just said is that you can multiply a number times 1, and you still get the same number, right? This is going to be super important to us when we come back and talk about fractions. Now, this 1 is what we call... the multiplicative identity. Remember last week we talked about the additive identity? And that was, you could add what number without changing your answer? 
What number could you add to anything without changing it? Zero. Zero is the additive identity. Since I'm talking about the multiplicative identity, that means I'm talking about multiplication. And what can you multiply any number of times without changing it? You can multiply any number of times one, and it won't change your end result. So let's look at some examples of this in action. I mean, expect me to give you something like this. If I have 1 times negative 959, what's my answer? It's just negative 959, right? Why is that? Well, according to the multiplication property of 1, if I multiply something times 1, I get the same number I started with, right? Or if I take 8,742 times 0, what do you get there? You get 0, right? If you multiply any number times 0, you get what? 0. So if you've ever played around in a calculator and you're just multiplying numbers, if someone comes along and accidentally types in 0 when you're multiplying, you've lost everything, right? Like you're supposed to be multiplying, say, times 10, and you just, you don't hit the 1, and you just hit a 0. And that's, yeah, that, that's, that's no good, right? I love, and this whole thing about multiplying times 0 that gives you 0, that's going to come back to you in 0308. And it's important when we start solving some equations that are a little more complicated than what we're going to, going to see this semester. All right? Any questions about these guys? Yes. Yeah. 